Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I do a bit more work on that Mayfad lathe or I modify the tailstock, casting the tailstock housing to take a digital readout scale. I show quite a bit of that. There was some tricky set of work on the mill machine. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. I do a welding build up repair on a roller and I modify some aluminium caliper mounts, like mounting brackets for a, a sports car to take different calibers. There's some viewer mail come in, I want to show that. And as an item I bought in the most unexpected place that I'm sure I'll be found useful in the shop. This spanner was sent in from a lad called Terry Miles from Lancashire. It's an interesting spanner. It actually goes from 8mm all the way up to 19mm. It's clever how it does it. That one there is 10mm and if you push that through you can put a 12mm bolt into it. All these hexes go into each other all the way up to 19mm. In fact that one there is actually 22 It's also going to ratchet on it. It's going to be quite useful around the shop because I'm desperate at loss in spanners. Obviously you can't get into tight spaces with it but for clamping things on the miller machine it's going to be ideal so you'll see us using that quite a lot. I've never seen anything quite so... It's like the old-fashioned bike spanner where you had the two ends and you turned them, you turn them. It's a, I suppose a the makeup on that really is an interesting clever bit of kit. Thanks very much, Terry. You'll certainly see us using that. Then, something I bought at a supermarket that were on special offer, I think I paid £4 for them. I'm not going to start painting, but they're going to be handy for putting cutting oil, tapping paste when I'm using the lathe because they don't seem to last long. They've got a nice long handle so you can keep out of the way. So, whenever you're out shopping with a wife, have a look on the we get a shop called Aldi and they have a centre row and they sell stuff like this and clamps and saws. Oh, whenever I go there I always come out with something, I'm sure a lot of you lads do as well. But I think this was a good buy, I, thought I was £4.50. Even if you're going to be drawing things, I think they're a good buy. I get emails every week, some interesting, some not so interesting. But I'm always getting emails about work on layers and milling machines. And I've had quite a few people ask us if I would do a tutorial video on lathes and milling machines. To be perfectly honest, I've got no formal qualifications at all on lathes and milling machines. I'm just a mechanic that pisses about, but I seem to be able to piss about quite well. So I have decided to do a short series of videos. The first one is all about centre lathes, metal working lathes. The videos will be 10 minutes long, going everything from what the machine does all the way throughout the advanced features, screw cutting, uh, all the all the nice interesting bits on layers and I'll try and explain them in sort of the way I try to explain things normally in practical layman's terms. The first one is now up on the Patreon channel. There'll be four or five more going on the Patreon channel and then they'll come down onto the normal YouTube. So if you want to see them earlier, you'll have to have a look on the Patreon channel. The link, as usual, is in the description box. This is a Mayfad ML7 lathe tailstock. It's of the same lathe I've just done the cross slide for. Well, the lads bought the three axis DRO for it. And you want to make the machine a flat on there so you can mount the DRO scale onto it. I've basically used the, the spindle or the nose to mount it on, I've got it in the V block. I've got the V block up against me with a 14mm K steel. I've had a square on there and it's lying nice and level. I've got a clamp on the back. I've got a good hole of it. So I'm just going to machine a flat on there with a big mill and cutter, and then he can drill and tap it wherever he wants for his scale. And that'll be a, a square piece of aluminium with a hole in with a clamp on that goes onto the onto the nose of there. Right, so I'll put a big mill and cutter in and we'll see if we can get this machine. I like doing setups like this in a mill machine where you've got to sort of think a little bit and work out how you're going to hold it. <clears throat> I could have stripped it all down and clamped it on an angle plate on that face there, but I didn't really want to take it all apart. This is just casting in so it should be, be fairly soft.
piercing all over the door to it. There's no barrier there at the monkeys. Stay all over. Stay alone. take a little bit more just to remove that lip off there just get the sharp edge off Fails to knock the sharp corner off, but he's got a now a nice flat area, and there's plenty meat there to drill and tap into. That's a piece of scale he supplied, so that goes under there somewhere. And drill and tap to six mil holes in. I'm not quite sure which way it goes, so I'll leave that leave that for him to do. But he's got two nice register points there, so it should do the job quite nicely. Excuse me, that. I've got a ruler here off a metal working machine. And what's happened is the bearing that goes on the end of there has actually been spinning on the shaft, so the shaft's damaged. And what they've been doing, I can zoom in on it. They've gone along the end with some punch marks to try and tighten it up, but it's, the bearing's still piss wobbly slack. No good at all. And that's the, the good side. So I've got a good side to work off. So I'll take some measurements off that. I can either weld that up and remachine it, but the easiest way will be to just chop it off, drill and tap it, screw a bolt in, and then machine the bolt down to those dimensions. Because I don't know what it's made of. If I weld it, it'll probably go hard. It's just made of steel by the feel of that, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll measure this end up first, do a little sketch, and then we'll get it machined up. I've put it in the layer just to hold it so I can measure that end. It's running reasonably true on the main body of it, but I put it on the end of here and then on the end of there that bit's piss wobbly so that bit's actually bent, you can see it's got a bend in it so it wants both ends done. Well that's been bent taking the bearing off I want to do it now, but it's it's certainly bent, that's no good at all. So I'll measure this up and then we'll do both ends. If I had a bit of barbie, something to make a new roller, but I do think I've got a bit of bar big enough. And so we'll get some measurements of it. Make sure that's just over. Over eight mil. That one's 
seven mil and that one there is it eight mil okay, so i've got it running nice and true and you can see that little ends not true so i'm going to drill it and tap it screw that 14 mil bolt in and remachine that end on the end of the bolt It's definitely got the wobbles. I suppose I could weld it up. I may try welding it first and go from there. I see quite a lot of time if I do weld it up. Right, it's welded up not too badly. I just put a little bit of main steel onto it. Eight point one, and I want eight point zero five. Get a nice little drive off there. Sped up. Just about there. Yeah, that's gonna that'll go on now. I'll just square the end up. Seven mil from there.
think the scope I've done here don't matter very much. That's point zero three. Not on there very nicely. Just going to polish the outside of this to make it look like I've cared about it. Once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes. Anyway, thanks for watching.